Hi there, it's Rob Sayer. Welcome to the first in our series of QLab tutorials. Uh, to introduce QLab to you, um, it's a Mac-based uh, piece of queuing software, which means that it, you can use it to run uh, lots of different elements of a show. It's uh, industry standard in a lot of places, uh, theatre in particular. And let's have a look at some of its uses to start off with. So, so QLab is kind of queuing software, and it's not a media creation software, so you don't spend a lot of time doing complex edits and things like that. Having, having said that, you can actually do quite a lot within QLab uh, on the programming side to create uh, complex outputs. So, so it does create complex queues from a single action, so you can program it to be very simple to operate, um, and it also plays, it plays back basically sound effects and music video clips. It also has a load of other stuff it does as well which we kind of don't get so involved with which are triggering MIDI events and uh, interestingly interestingly, MIDI show control which sends a go to a lighting desk. That's quite common in theatre now where one person controls uh, the lighting desk and uh, all of the sound and all of the video and stuff via, uh, via QLab. Uh, it also takes a camera input and it can also interact with timecode which is a uh, media um, a timing system which is used by kind of cameras and and uh, people who create uh, recorded media stuff so uh, so that's what it does from a playback point of view it will play back audio files so that's what gives you your sound effects and your or your soundscapes it will play back video in images like mpeg4s or jpegs or whatever um, and it'll also play back other cues such as cameras and midi and, and the things we just talked about you have control over levels and fades and looping of things, which is how you can build up your soundscapes and your media content. And it also allows for time cues and follow-ons and other tools that you'd use during queuing. So all of those things add together to make QLab very flexible and uh, quite a choice for show, show control. Now, there's got quite a lot of benefits. One of the main ones being it, it has non-destructive control over your content. So you can do quite a lot with it without uh, actually affecting your original content files. So in the programming of it, you uh, don't affect your original files at all. You just uh, create a sort of show running list of all the things you want those files to do. Another big benefit of it is very consistent show running. So uh, once you've programmed it up, it does the same thing every night. Uh, the operator just has to hit the space bar uh, to set a queue going. And uh, and so that's it, really. And with that comes e of ease of operation. So once you've got things programmed up, you don't have to have like a, a real technical person operating it. Quite a lot of shows are operated on QLab uh, sound and video wise, particularly uh, by the DSM and a lot of smaller, smaller touring shows. So once it's programmed up, it's very easy to to use. Also you can create some very complex output playback stuff including sort of surround sound and things like that so sound designers really like the flexibility of being able to do stuff like that um, and they kind of spend hours programming up complex soundscapes to be played back in the theatre. Um, you can also program it to execute quite complicated cues so you could uh, hit go and a load of different things would happen uh, without without any kind of input from the operator, which is quite good. Some of the drawbacks then, uh, when it comes to show control software, and QLab isn't the only one, there's a certain amount of initial programming time required. So there's a bit of a reliance on kind of technology um, and uh, crashes and bugs and, and the possibility of content loss, the sort of thing you get with any kind of technology really, but uh, computers are a thing that people have a particular phobia of when it comes to uh, going wrong. And along with that, initial programming time uh, is obviously the knowledge required to program cues and set levels so although it's quite simple to use it's uh, it's can be reasonably complicated to program depending on what you want to do with it so in the UT we have our, our UT Mac which has the full QLab license on it and for us that means we have uh, audio hardware which has eight outputs so you can send eight different eight audio to eight different outputs uh, we can all has also have the hardware to send three video outputs, so you can have three different pieces of content playing at any one time. So that's what it does. The first thing we're going to do is have a quick uh, interface review of QLab, so to find out what's where on screen. But before we do that, I just want to show you the QLab website, uh, it's figure53.com. Now you can download QLab with a uh, stereo audio output and um, and no video playback capability uh, for free from Figure 53. 
but it is only for Mac. So uh, those of you who got Windows, there are other show control um, systems using Windows, some of which aren't quite so popular as QLab, but basically QLab is, is Mac only, uh, and it's the one that we use uh, in the in the UT and the one that we use in theatre production. So we're all going to be learning that one. So let me flip over to my QLab installation. It's this little kind of flask thing down here. So this is the main QLab interface. It's kind of laid out in a reasonably straightforward way. The main thing to understand before we start about QLab is that it will play back pretty much anything on a Mac that you can play either in QuickTime or uh, via iTunes. So anything that QuickTime will play uh, will play back. So whether it be an audio file or a video file or whatever it is, uh, if you can play it in QuickTime, it'll play back in QLab. So that gives you an idea of the kind of files uh, that you could or couldn't use with QLab. There's there's loads of them, sort of general audio files, obviously being things like MP3 and stuff like that. Video files, which will go on to at a later stage, being MP4 and all those .dot movs and all that sort of thing. So, so to start off with, then we're going to be looking at simply the audio side of QLab. Before we do that, we need to have a quick look around the interface. So. With QLab, you get your usual kind of Mac menus at the top, familiar file edit menus and stuff. And everything else really after file edit, quite a lot of it actually appears in the interface, uh, which is laid out in front of us. Now, a lot of the things that appear here at the moment are toggled on and off by these buttons up here on the left. So the inspector here is toggled on and off by that eye. So that's the part of the bottom of the screen which we'll have a look at. The toolbox here on the left is toggled on and off uh, here, and there's some other ones including active cues, which uh, we'll keep closed at the moment. So, so those buttons there basically uh, toggle parts of the screen that we can use to uh, to do stuff. There's also another one here which shows us different cue lists and things like that. And but the main part here is the transport controls, so we can use that to stop all of our cues uh, or to uh, re reset them, or you can load a specific cue to a particular time. So we'll come back to that in a bit. The big button here says go on it, strangely enough, is the go button. On a Mac, usually QLab's set up to go when you press the space bar, so that's what you generally tend to do. There's the, the next part up here is this little pane here, which tells you, uh, usually gives you the opportunity to input some notes about a particular cue. Now, if you get very fancy with QLab, you'll find you can write all kinds of stuff up here uh, that will tell you exactly what's going on. So then we come to the main part of our uh, screen here, which is this bit here, which is the kind of current queue list. In our uh, world, we mostly use just one single queue list. So this is the area where the where the queues are appear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a queue straight into QLab. So there's a number of ways you can do it. You can either, if you want to add an audio queue, you can double click on audio and it will uh, make a queue appear. So it says queue one. And there's a picture of a speaker. And then here, where it says target, it says drag an audio file um, into, into this space here to create the audio queue. Now, the first thing you'll notice, which is something that is very important in QLab, is that there is a red cross at the end of the queue. And what I've done was when I've hovered over that queue, it says this queue does not have a valid audio file. So what's that, what that's telling me is I've added an audio queue, but it hasn't got an actual target. If you want to add more audio files, you can always just open up your finder in the Mac and you can drag Q's uh, audio files straight into the Q list. So I'm going to grab something here and drag it in. And there you see it says creaking door opens MP3. That's my, my Q there. My Q uh, above it, Q1, which doesn't have uh, a target, uh, which is basically the file, uh, I'm going to actually change the file in a different way. So I'm going to click on this arrow here and I'm going to select something else. So how about a thunder rumble? So there's two ways of selecting audio cues. You can either drag and drop them straight out of the finder into QLab, or you can add an audio cue by double clicking or even pulling a cue into position on the list. And then you can hit the arrow and set a file name for it. Now, they, uh, the other thing to remember to find out about QLab is that if you want to delete something, if you select it, which means it's got this blue line along here, you need to hold down Command and hit Backspace. If you just hit Backspace on its own, it won't delete, uh, but you can hold down Command and hit Backspace and it will go away. 
Now, the other thing you might see in QLab is when you've created your audio cues, is you might find that uh, it still has a red cross here. And when you hover over it, it says something about, uh, not about the target, but about a, a, an audio output device. When you first set up QLab, you might find that it needs to be told where to send the audio to. So what we need to do is go to Preferences, which is either this button up here, or also you can find it under Workspace Preferences. So I'm going to click this button here, and I'm going to look for the part of the Preferences that say Audio. Where it says here, Patch 1, Built-in Audio Output, um, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click off that. You can see here that now nothing, patch one, patch two, patch three, nothing is patched to any audio device. So if I go done now, you can see this red cross appears. And it says this queue does not have a valid audio output. Now when you set up QLab to start off with, as I say, if you find a red cross, just hover over the red cross and it will tell you why that queue is effectively broken. Now what I've done is because I've unpatched my audio device, uh, QLab doesn't know where to send the sound. So I'm going to repatch that up. I'm going to patch sound output one to patch one, and uh, and then I'll leave my other my other two patches for now. So let's have a quick listen to that. I'm going to load up my first queue by clicking on it, where it's got a little load yellow dot next to it. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a little thunder rumble going on. It goes on for a number of seconds, and you can see here the queue's just kind of running through now to the end. And when it's finished, it gets to the end of the queue and it parks up automatically on the next queue. And I'm going to hit go for the next queue again. And there's my creaking door. It's slightly longer, that one. So I'm just going to stop that for a sec. I'm going to hit reset all and then it reloads uh, up my first queue. So any of these fields here, uh, you can the queue number or the queue name, you can actually change. It gives it the default file name, but if you wanted to call it something else, you could call it um, kind of storm, storm begins or something. Um, you can uh, add that there, or you could call it queue 1.5 if you wanted to by changing that uh, that thing there. So those are two queues that run one after another. I just set them going. And uh, what we'll look at next time is we'll look at some of the different things that you can do with those individual queues um, and some of the ways in which you can affect them and automate some of their settings. So uh, we'll see you next time.